restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. I want to welcome you. I'm Pastor George uh, Bedlian. I'm the pastor here, senior pastor, and it's really great to have you here. We're here to uh, honor uh, Stephen Boyce and uh, give glory to God. And I get the privilege of, of uh, praying and then also reading uh, Psalms 23. Uh, but before I do, I just want to welcome people um, and kind of give, uh, you know, uh, kind of identify a little bit. Uh, who people are. And then after the service, there's also refreshments in the back. We want you to encourage you to stay and, and talk to people. What um, I'd like to do is just ask uh, people to stand, not yet, but groups at a time, and stay standing. So if you were a friend of the family, would you stand and stay standing? If you went to church with them on their spiritual journey, would you stand? If you came in just to get the cookies and coffee, would you stand? <laughs> and family, would you stand? And if you worked with Stephen, would you stand? And then everyone else, would you stand? And let's give a big hand for Stephen. He's in heaven and he's with the Lord. So stay standing, I'm going to read and then pray, and then um, Pastor Ryan's going to come and lead us, oh no, not Pastor Ryan, uh, actually uh, Tawny's going to come and share the obituary. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside quiet waters, he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, and even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're the resurrection and the life. We thank you that Stephen put his trust in you. We thank you for the way that you love us and care for us. We thank you for uh, coming into this Passion Week that we remember that you died on the cross for us and that you came out of the grave alive and you conquered death and sin and Satan. We thank you for that. We pray that this service would just really uh, glorify you and then honor uh, Stephen Boyce's life. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hello, uh, my name is Tanya Boyce, and I am Steve Boyce's daughter-in-law, and I have the honor today of reading his obituary. Stephen Michael Boyce, age 70, went home to heaven on Sunday, June 4th, 2023. He was born to the late Richard and Sylvia Boyce on March 3rd, 1953. He married Marianne K. Boyce on March 15th, 1975. Stephen was more than just a father and a grandfather. He was a guiding light, a source of unwavering support, and a beacon of love for all those who knew, for all those who had the privilege of knowing him. His impact on the lives of his family and friends is immeasurable, and his presence will forever be cherished in our hearts. Stephen possessed a warm and gentle nature that instantly made people feel at ease in his company. He had a genuine interest in others and an innate ability to listen without judgment. Countless individuals found solace and comfort in his compassionate words and wise counsel. He was the kind of person who would drop everything and lend a helping hand or offer a shoulder to lean on. Stephen had an incredible capacity for empathy and his ability to understand and connect with others was truly remarkable. As a father, Stephen was a pillar of strength and a constant source of encouragement. He poured his heart and soul into nurturing his children, guiding him through life's challenges, and instilling in them the values of love, 
compassion, and resilience. His love for his children was boundless, and he always prioritized their well-being above all else. Stephen's legacy lives through the love and kindness his children now share with their own families and the world around them. But perhaps one of the roles that Stephen had the greatest joy was being a papa. He embraced the roles, the role of doting grandfather with enthusiasm and devotion. Papa Stephen was a source of endless joy and laughter for his grandchildren, creating memories that will be cherished for a lifetime. Whether it was reading stories, playing games, or simply offering a comforting hug, he had a special ability to make each grandchild feel like the most important person in the world. His love for his grandchildren was immeasurable, and they were truly blessed to call him their papa. Stephen's impact reached far beyond his immediate family. His kind of generous spirit touched the lives of all those who had the privilege of knowing him. His warm smile, his infectious laughter, and his ability to make everyone feel valued will forever be etched in our memories. He taught us the importance of cherishing our loved ones, embracing life's blessings, and finding joy in the simplest of moments. Stephen is preceded in life or in death by his parents, Richard and Sylvia Boyce, his brother, David Boyce. He is survived by his wife, Mary Ann, his children, Alyssa and her husband, Jared, David and his wife, Tanya, Anna Ruth, Joshua, and his wife, Kelsey. Additionally, his grandchildren, Paige, Kenzie, Aubrey, Landry, Rustin, Hudson, and Mason. Family and friends, today as we gather to honor and remember my dad, I want to first thank all of you for coming and sharing this special day with us. Your love and support means so much to my mom and our family. I'm David. I'm the second of four children in the boys' family, and I believe I was really handed down dad's love for sports and his competitiveness. One of the greatest gifts my dad ever gave me was his love for basketball, but really sports in general. My dad was six foot seven, and to me, he was always a giant. From the moment I could dribble a ball, he was outside in the driveway with me, teaching me the ins and outs of the game. It took me well into my teen years to ever come close to beating him. We would play hours of various sports together outside, but one of my fondest memories was dad using a red plastic bat and crushing a tennis ball towards our neighbor's fence so I could leap up and rob home runs, just like Griffey. But my dad wasn't just a sports guy. He also guided me in matters of faith. He instilled in me a deep love for Jesus, teaching me the importance of kindness, compassion, and faithfulness. His unwavering belief in the power of prayer and the strength found in God's love has been a guiding light for me, especially during my life's toughest seasons. I am for forever grateful for the spiritual foundation he provided in the example he set through his own life. One of the special traditions my dad and I shared was texting each other during sports events. Whether it was a nail-biting Mariners game or a thrilling Seahawks win, we would exchange messages filled with excitement, frustration, and above all, love for the game. Those texts weren't just about sports, they were about connection. Bonding us over a shared interest and celebrating the highs and lows of Seattle sports together. As I reflect on these memories, I'm reminded of the incredible influence my dad had on my life. Having a son of my own shows me what an impact a father has and what an incredible bond a father-son relationship is. My dad's love for my son, Rustin, was also truly special. Rustin loved going up and visiting Nana and Papa, well, except for the long drive. My dad always encouraged Rustin and was always interested in his sports and how his teams were doing. I know that Rustin misses his papa dearly. Dad's last text message to me was, believing incredible things for you and your family, one day at a time. 
Jesus says he will never leave us nor forsake us. I love you. Though he may no longer be with us in person, his legacy lives on in the countless lives he touched and the memories we hold dear. Dad, thank you for everything. I love you. My name is Alyssa. Oh, that's hard. I, I knew it would be emotional, but I'm going to try my best, guys. Um, I'm the oldest of the four children, and um, I just want to say thank you so much for coming here today. It means the world to us that you guys are here supporting us. These past nine months have been really surreal. It's just hard to accept sometimes, you know, that he's gone and that I just can't text him anymore or call him up. He was such an amazing dad, and I'm really looking forward to the day when we can all be together again. <sighs> My dad was the one who led me to Christ when I was just three years old. Um, we were on a hike, and we stopped, and I asked Jesus into my heart. It was one of my earliest memories, and I've always held that memory close to my heart. I'm so grateful that my dad became a Christian and shared his faith with us. My dad inspired me to listen to really good music. Some of my best memories are of me and him listening to music together. Um, country stars like George Strait and Colin Ray and The Beatles and Leo Sayer and Air Supply, and we shared a love of classical music, too. He inspired me to love puzzles, gardening, and teaching. He was the most amazing, patient teacher. We all grew up homeschooled back when it wasn't all that popular to be homeschooled. The two subjects that he was passionate most about was math and U.S. history. We loved quizzing each other on state capitals and the order of the presidents. And he was so patient. I know I already said that, but now that I'm a mom and a teacher, I can fully appreciate how patient he really was. Sometimes it annoyed me that he was so slow and patient, but really, they were his best qualities. My dad also inspired me to bake bread. We used to bake bread a lot together when I was younger. And we all know about his amazing sourdough bread that he started baking in the last couple years. How is my scoring on this loaf? Um, I heard this quote recently, and it really spoke to me. Sometimes you will never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. There were so many moments that are now beautiful memories. There were a million little moments with my dad that seemed ordinary at the time, but now I treasure them. My dad was also the best grandpa, or papa as they called him, to my four girls. Every chance they got to see him, it was just the most exciting thing for my girls because they loved him so much. He was there for them, whether it was a birthday or soccer game, and he gave the biggest hugs. The bond that they shared was so special and something that I will always treasure. I want to thank my dad for always being present in my life and being a wonderful father, the spiritual leader I needed, and shaping who I am today. I'm going to end with this passage that my dad put on Facebook just two days before he passed away. We wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help. In our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Psalm 30, 20 to 22. I can't wait to see him in heaven. And as my dad always said, PHP, peace, health, and protection.
I am Anna Ruth, the third of Steve Boyce's four children. My dad was a dad a girl would dream of having. He was loving, kind, and gentle, and genuinely admired all the little things I would create and was interested in. He believed in me and supported my pursuits driving me to weekly Seattle Youth Symphony rehearsals where he would wait for over four hours and would often say things like, was I hearing a CD just now? When he just heard me play a scale on my violin. Many times he said, play your violin, sing and dance all at the same time. I thought he was joking but now I believe he was expanding my thinking of what is possible. He gladly watched the movie Cinderella with me more times than I can count. And we had so many movie quotes that we would say back and forth. We practically spoke in movie lines with many different voices and characters. We had such a special relationship. He was the one to deliver me into this world instead of a doctor, and the first one to hold me as a baby, creating a unique bond. It was a tradition for him to pick the first rose that budded on our climbing rose tree to give to me, and we would often find ourselves saying the same things at exactly the same time. He knew that every time he played violin music on the TV, I would run down the hallway with exuberance to find out what he was playing. It was like his way of calling me to be with him. One of my all-time favorite things to do was to make him laugh. Seeing him throw back his head in a hearty chuckle was so satisfying. My dad was a generous man. He loved to give and would often slip me bills of money in a very sleek 
top secret manner and a shh, tell no one kind of way. My dad was loving, protective, and supportive, but the greatest thing he did for me was lead me to Christ. When I was six years old, he knelt down with me on our living room floor and led me through a prayer of salvation, which I am eternally grateful for. Dad, thank you for leading me to Jesus and for loving me so much. I miss you more than words can say. I love you. Hello, I'm Joshua Boyce. I am the youngest child of Stephen and Miriam. I have so many wonderful memories of me and my dad. They say you don't truly understand your parents until you become a parent yourself, and I, uh, I think we can confirm that's true. Uh, one example that I didn't really quite understand until later was after a long commute of traffic and work, my dad would pull into the driveway and uh, lean his chair all the way back into a full recline and uh, sit there for about 30 minutes just enjoying the rest of whatever music or peace and quiet he had left of his day. Uh, and I don't think we ever really understood that. As a parent, I can, I can relate now, right? But as kids, we were always like looking at the blinds, like, what is he doing? Like, like, you know, like, why would he be out there by himself in the quiet, you know, escape of his car? But um, I, I feel that. Um, my dad was simple. He lived by a simple code. He said, God first, others before yourself. And uh, he would bring that little zinger out at the most irritating times. Um, usually when I wasn't putting God first or others or um, some variation of, of the above. But um, he, uh, he always said that. He always said, God first, others second, yourself third. Um, and it's just something that he, he lived by. Um, he was incredibly fun. All the people in this room probably have a funny story of Steve, right? Like he was, um, he was funny and, and we're all going to miss him. Um, I, had a, I had a problem with the fact that I felt like I was like robbed of my dad almost early, right? Like I felt like I had more years, like, I wanted more years with him. And God laid on my heart a very specific Psalm 24.1. It says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And I was just so deeply reminded that we're not of this earth and that Steve wasn't belonging to me as, 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 as much as anything, right? He, he belonged to God, and God called him home. And, and I, it gave me so much peace in a moment of, of fragility that, um, you know, we, we truly are, we belong to God. Um, on Father's Day, my own children, Hudson and Mason, gave me a really cool book. It's by author Amit Zappa, and it's titled Because I'm Your Dad. And it's a book, and it goes through many um, favorite activities that kids do with their dads. And at the end of the book, it ends with, uh, because that's what my dad did for me. And I love that line, because it's a beautiful nod to the legacy that we carry on from generation to generation. And all the things that I reminded myself of what my dad did for me, and the kinds of things that I carry on and do for my own sons and children. In so many ways, I'm the father I am today, because of the things that my dad did for me. Grief is a measure of gratitude. And in this room, there's so much gratitude and so much gratefulness. I'm grateful for so many wonderful memories, things to share and traditions to repeat. I'm, I'm just grateful I even had a dad. And I'm grateful that my dad was Steve. Now I'd like to invite all of Steve's grandchildren, and they're going to come up and read some of his favorite passages of the Bible. Hello, we are the grandchildren of Steve Boyce. We are going to be sharing some of our papa's favorite Bible verses. I'm Paige, I'm 19 years old, and I'm going to be sharing my papa's all-time favorite verse. This is very dear to him. From Jeremiah 29:11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. 
Hi, I'm Kenzie, and I'm 13. I'm going to be reading Jeremiah 29, 12. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Hi, I'm Aubrey. I'm 11. I will be reading Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Hi, I'm Hudson. I'm 10 years old, and this is my Bible verse. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Isaiah 55, 12. Hi, my name is Rustin, and I'm 10 years old, and I will be reading Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I'm Ethan, and I'm 9 years old, and I'm going to be reading Matthew 11:28. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Hi, my name is Landry. I'm seven years old, and I will be reading Psalm 139, 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And now we'll be watching a video. We are born. One fine day, children of God on our way. Mama smiles, Daddy cries. Miracle before their eyes. They protect us till we're of age. Through it all, love remains. Boy moves on, takes a bride. She stands faithful by his side. Tears and sweat, they build a home and raise a family.
privilege to be able to uh, share uh, the gospel message uh, for Stephen's um, service. Uh, but before I do, I just was so impressed with uh, grandkids all lined up doing the verses, and then the, the quartet was just amazing. Could we just give them a hand? I know maybe somebody don't think it's proper, but... And then to have four kids that uh, give... Um, such wonderful talks about their dad. It's just super accomplishing. So uh, the one thing I wanted to share with you uh, is what uh, Stephen is doing in heaven. So he believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who's the resurrection and the life, and uh, put his faith and put his heart in Jesus' hands. And um, now when I was growing up, I was blessed to have Christian parents, and my dad was a pastor. He was When I was a kid, he was always becoming a pastor. didn't become a pastor until I was 12. And so it was always, I didn't have the bad PK experience. Actually, it always was wonderful. And um, But when I was going to church, we went to church like Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night prayer meeting. And then Wednesday night prayer meeting, you know, many times I, as a little kid, I had to sit next to some of the older uh, saints, the older women, and they were always talking about heaven, the pearly gates, the streets of gold, the choirs, and it just sounded so boring, I can't even tell you, it just was so boring, and then Hollywood made it worse, you know, you know, the people were walking around with little harps and uh, funny uh, wings, and you know, you were turned into an angel, just all kinds of stuff that's not in the Bible, and and as I got older and I read the Bible, there were some things that talked about heaven, and even though we uh, look uh, at a mirror dimly. We don't really know what it's like. There are some clues in the Bible about what heaven is like. So I want to give you two things uh, of what uh, Steve, when he walked into heaven, uh, happened to him. And uh, the, the first thing that Steve experienced is that he saw God. He actually sees God. Now, what the ancients wanted to have all their life, writing poetry and songs and psalms and, and looking forward somehow to see God. And they knew the minute they saw him that they would be dead. And so there's just something wonderful about actually entering into heaven and seeing God. And there's this verse uh, in Job 19 that says, In my flesh I will see God, I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not an another. And if you know the Lord Jesus Christ and you enter heaven you will see God and then you will see the Lord Jesus Christ first John 3 2 says dear friends now we are children of God and what we will has not yet been made known but we know that when Christ appears we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is and one of the first things that happened to Stephen was he saw the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, most likely he got a hug and the Lord Jesus Christ said, well done, my good and faithful servant. And it's just like the most wonderful thing. I don't know when that happens to me or it happens to you. Will we bow down? Will we cry? Will we, will we you know, smile the biggest smile we've ever smiled? What will it be like? And it is just a wonderful thing that we will experience God. Now, the second thing is that everything is new for Stephen. Even... Uh, talking about this, you know, that he went uh, to be with the Lord uh, back in June last year. Uh, the, the thing that's so wonderful is everything became new. Revelations 21, 4 and 5 says, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. God says, I am making everything new. And I grew up uh, in downtown Los Angeles and my 
uh, mom and dad, where my dad was going to Bible school, and many times he worked nights, and you know they were always trying to uh, have enough check that would last through the month, and many times we had more month than we had check, and so we didn't have a lot of stuff. Uh, and so anytime you got something new, like when you went to school and got a new pair of pants or new shoes, you know, something new, and uh, I haven't had very many new cars, but when I have had new cars or got into somebody else's new car, I love the smell of a new car, and there's just something about new that is wonderful. Even babies, you know, brand new babies, they smell good. Have you noticed that? And they, they look good. Their skin doesn't have wrinkles or moles or, you know, all the scars, everything that we pick up. They're just beautiful, and uh, this idea that everything will be new, I want to give you a couple things what the Bible says about what that actually means. Uh, uh, the first thing is that Steve has a new body. Uh, Philippians 3.20 says, Our citizenship is in heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body, his resurrected body. And so Steve has this perfect body, and um, I'm a little bit jealous. Six foot seven, you know, uh, I, at my height, was five foot six. The last physical I had, they said, now you're five, five and a half now. And I really never wanted to go back to the doctor again because <laughs> that was the death knoll. And, you know, six foot seven, that, that was a dream. But, you know, imagine what, what he looks like, you know, in his new body and handsome and smiling and, you know, just absolutely beautiful and no more heart problems and no more physical pain and no more getting old. And the other thing about new is Stephen has a new name. I don't know if you realize this. Revelation 2.17 says that only you and God will know it. Uh, I will give, Revelation 2.17, Jesus says, I will give some hidden manna, and I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. Uh, we don't know what manna is. In Hebrew, manna means what is it, you know. So there's just going to be this special food. There's going to be this uh, special moment that you have with the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is going to give you this white stone. We don't even know what that is, and it's going to have your new name, your nickname. And Jesus loved to nickname people. He nicknamed James and John, the two of his disciples, uh, the sons of thunder uh, because of their tempers, you know. And I'm sure he had fun kind of poking fun at their tempers and their anger. And he nicknamed uh, Simon, he nicknamed him Peter, which means the rock or little rock. Or, you know, in our translation of street names, it'd be Rocky. And uh, it's just kind of amazing how Jesus loves to give nicknames. And every one of us to go to heaven, you'll be given a new name. Uh, which the way this is done suggests two things that I really like. The first thing is privacy. Only you and Jesus, only you and God will know your new name. And when I was growing up, you know, heaven sounded like a big church service. Just, you know, choirs and singing and endless, endless. And, you know, everyone was together and we're just, uh, you know, uh, robots all singing and praising God. And there would be no privacy I don't know about you, but I like privacy. I, I like having my own uh, bedroom. I like having my own bathroom. I like some privacy. And there's something wonderful about this that Jesus is going to give you a name, and it suggests that there's uh, privacy, but also it suggests a new name is that there'll be intimacy. We have this idea that it's just going to be all together, and, 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 and there's this idea that there will be times where there'll be the throngs in heaven, but there's also intimacy with God. What we want, what we're always, you know, striving for, even if you know Christ, there's always these times that you want to be closer to him and higher with him and better with him and more with him. And this is one of the most wonderful things. It's, this is intimacy when you're face to face with Jesus and he gives you his new name for you. I don't know what Stephen's name will be. I don't know if it will be faithful or if it will be steadfast or kind heart. I just hope mine's not little midget, so... Another part of being uh, all things new is that Stephen has a new place. And many of you probably already know this, that, that Jesus goes to prepare a place for us. And John 14 says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to be with me. That you also may be where I am. And so uh, the King James Version says mansions. There's another one that says uh, home. Uh, this one says, you know, rooms. 
Now, we don't know what it will be like. We don't know what kind of home we'll have. We know that in the, uh, the final state, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And so I don't know if uh, Stephen's new home is going to be on, the, uh, on, on earth or maybe it's going to be in heaven. Or maybe, you know, you get both. You get a, you get a vacation home and you get uh, your regular home. I, it's going to be wonderful, and I don't know what type it will be, but it will fit you, and it will be for you. And I want you to know that if Stephen could come back, if he was granted 30 minutes to come back and join us for cookies and coffee in a little bit, if he were to come back and share with us, and we could just hear him talk about what heaven is really like, uh, he would say to us, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And then he asks, do you believe this? And that's the most important question of all. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm going to close in prayer. Pastor Ryan's going to come and lead us in a couple of favorite songs. Uh, and um, and we, we're going to have you stand. Let's stand for prayer and then stay standing for the music. Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you for Stephen's life. Thank you for his family. Thank you for wonderful testimonies, wonderful testimonies about this man, uh, this saint, this Christian. Oh, God, be with his wife. Uh, comfort her with the, with the Holy Spirit. Comfort his family. Thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, we're going to close our time together by just singing a couple of his favorite uh, worship songs. So uh, the lyrics will be up here if you'd like to sing along. Oh, I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hand. Moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I love your voice, and you have led me through the fire. Oh, in darkest nights, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God all my life, in all my life you have been faithful, in all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, Surrender now, and I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, 
I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind Because I know there is peace within your presence Oh, I speak Jesus And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. Oh, I speak Jesus. Hey, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. And break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Oh, I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. Go oh, to every soul held captive by depression. Oh, I speak Jesus, your name, your name is power, your name is sealing, and your name is life, yes it is, Lord, break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets oh Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus Jesus. Oh, shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Oh, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. Oh, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Lord, we worship you. We worship you today. We worship you in the good times and the bad because we know that you're faithful and you're worthy. So hear our cry, hear our praise today. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, there's food and a reception out in the lobby. Feel free to linger and visit with one another.